turning now to recent data from the CDC on COVID-19 booster shots and breakthrough infections. These stats from April 23rd of this year show boosted Americans are catching COVID at nearly double the rate of those who have been not who those who have not been boosted. Still, COVID-19 infections among the unvaccinated remains the highest group, as you see on your screens. For more on this, let's bring in John Moore. He's a professor of microbiology and immunology at Will Cornell Medical College, and we appreciate you spending some time with us today. First, what do you make of this data? Is it possible unvaccinated Americans aren't testing as much, perhaps impacting uh, what we're seeing here, the results? That's, that's partly, partly it, I think. But there's also another factor that the, the vaccines are protecting very well still against severe infection, severe disease and death. So protection against those most critical factors, ending up in hospital or worse, that is still there. But during this Omicron wave, we're seeing an increased number of mild infections, at-home type of infections, the inconvenient, having a cold, being off work, not great, but not the end of the world. And that's because the, these Omicron variants um, are able to break through antibody protection and cause these mild infections. So one of the dynamics here is that people feel after vaccination and boosting that they're more protected than they actually are. So they increase their risks. Mm. So they feel that I've been vaccinated, I've had a booster, I, I can't get this anymore. So I'm gonna go to a crowded bar or a concert or mingle with people in large groups indoors. That increases their risk and they end up getting these mild infections. So you know, that's totally understandable. We've all been doing this, mm -hmm. but that I think is the major driver of these statistics. Additional doses, the, the CDC has just recommended that people over 50 or people who are immunocompromised, people who are sicker in general, poor health, that they get an additional booster dose. That makes sense for, those, for that group of people. And people should, in those groups should follow the CDC recommendations. I was also wondering if, you know, because of the CDC recommendations, that the people that are getting boosters are the ones that are more vulnerable anyway. So then they would be stand a greater likelihood of picking up the virus just because they're in that vulnerable uh, group. And it's not that the boosters don't work. No, the boosters clearly work. The boosters will buy you an extra few months of stronger protection, but the booster effect wanes over a multi-month period. But, you know, if you have a booster and for several weeks, for a couple of months even, you have a much higher antibody level and you would be much more protected against even mild infections, but that does wane. So if you're in a vulnerable group and you're at risk of severe disease and death, Absolutely, you should go and get your booster shots. But for people of a younger age who are relatively at low risk, it is, it's just less important. And, and unfortunately, these mild infections, there's, there's not a huge amount we can do about it the, the, with the Omicron variants. They're just that much more transmissible and they are that much more capable of bursting through antibody protection. Um, but fortunately, as I keep emphasizing, the risks of ending up with severe infections are still lower, much lower for vaccinated people. And, you know, look at where we are at the moment. I mean, at the present, the, where is there, and the average across the states is around 110,000 recorded infections a day. But of course, a lot of people who do at-home testing and test positive don't report those. So there's a big under-report. This time last year, we were 10 times less than that. We were at a pretty much low. So there's a lot more virus circulating now than a year ago. But again, it's causing mild infections mostly, and therefore people aren't ending up dying of it. So, Professor, in our last moment here, how do we use that information as we move into the summer? Knowing that boosters are effective, they're helpful, masks are helpful, but these mild cases are spreading quite fast. Well, people still need to be on their guard. I mean, yeah, I, I'm, I'm flying tomorrow night. I'll be wearing a mask on the plane. It's not required, but it makes sense. So I'm going to do the sensible thing. You know, people should wear masks in crowded environments if they feel they're at risk, particularly in a risky group for progression to anything serious. I mean, at this stage of the pandemic, over two years in, people should have a pretty good idea of the risks of getting infected 
and of the risks to their own health. And common sense and, and awareness is the single greatest defense we've got, other than, of course, getting vaccinated and boosted when you're in the relevant, uh, rele relevant groups. Common sense. That doesn't like cost that. you anything. That's right. Uh, Professor John Moore, thank you very much. You're welcome. We'll be right back.